aliens did it. Do they actually make it out? Is there gonna be a season three? Who's the Joker? Are there more games? Usagi's dad is actually still alive. Alive in Borderland, that is. About a week ago, my friend suggested that I watch this show called Alice in Borderland. So naturally, I watched it. But from the wicked and sadistic games of life or death to the gruesome, very gruesome deaths and murders, you know, the show was just really an entire snooze fest. I really was not entertained at all. Joking, the show really hooked me from the start. And after finishing it, I had a lot of questions. So for today's video, we're gonna look at some popular fan theories via Reddit that it's meant to pick your brain, answer some questions considering the end or things that took place during the series. Now this video is just for fun and entertainment purposes only. All theories discussed are not my own. I also want to say that we are not discussing the manga or the manga, however you call it. We're gonna be discussing the live action. Forgot to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Brie with an E. I'm Mira. I am the queen of hearts. And recently I've been doing a lot of commentaries and like reviews on popular TV shows and movies. I plan on doing The Glory next, the K-drama that came out I think two weeks ago, December 30th. If you want to see that video, stay tuned. That's going to be next week. Also make sure to give this video a big thumbs up to let me know that you'd be interested or if you just want to, you know, help me out. It's for the algorithm, okay? And also make sure you subscribe. So let's get into the video. All right, number one. If I butcher these names, I'm sorry. I did practice them. I did practice them so don't think like oh my gosh you're coming and making a video you didn't do your research you didn't study even how to say the names i did i did this theory states that chota and shibuki are still alive We all know Karube is dead because he exploded right in front of Arisa, but we didn't see Chota or Shibuki actually dead. We just saw his shoe and her ID card. When Chota is dragging Shibuki into the bushes to hide from Arisa, something from the instructions pops up on the screen. You become the wolf if you are found. Hide well so the wolf won't find you. Then a couple seconds later, it comes up again, but zooming in on the hide well part. This really stood out to me because the rules of the game were that you had to hide so that you don't get caught. Chota and Shibuki did hide in the bushes, but Karube was out in the open when he died. Therefore, I think Chota and Shibuki are still alive as they followed the rules of the game. And why would the creators zoom in on that piece of text for no reason? They really do like foreshadowing. Also, I don't know if anyone survives in the manga, but the director may have made some changes for the TV show. So that's the gist of theory one. If I had read this theory before I watched season to actually would have clung to it and had a little bit more hope in it just because I love Chota. But I do not think that he is still alive or that girl Shibuki. If they had lived on, they would have had to continue to play the games unless they were somehow taken on to kind of coordinate the games like Momoka and Asahi. But even still, with that being their job, they had to play in some games. So I feel like we would have run into them later in the series playing a different game. I don't think that they would have completely disappeared. Also, the main contradiction to this theory is that when Arisa wakes up and he's talking to, I think, is his brother in the hospital, correct me if I'm wrong. He wakes up and he's talking about how he has all this survivor's guilt because he finds out that Karube and Chota died in the meteorite catastrophe completely destroying Tokyo. So that right there kind of already hints that Chota is really dead because he would have woken up in the hospital otherwise. This next one we may have all heard of and that is that aliens did it. It wasn't a meteorite that hit Tokyo, it wasn't fireworks, it was the clever and devious work of aliens. Now this user described the whole Alice in Borderland as an experiment for aliens and to then cover up the said experiment, they hurled the meteor and transported those that wanted to return at the appropriate time. Because the injuries that they sustained and the damage to the city would not have made sense without a catastrophic natural event of some sort. Now this theory is fun to think of, however, it did mock it in season 2, and so it's very highly unlikely that this was the cause. If aliens were the cause of this, I feel like they would have hinted at that more, like when we were introduced to that girl who remembered seeing fireworks, which actually turned out to be the meteorite striking Tokyo, I feel like instead of seeing fireworks, we would have seen maybe an odd, unidentified flying object. Then again, it could have just been the aliens implanting that 
fake memory inside their heads. Still, we know this theory couldn't possibly be true. I also feel like if I were an alien, I wouldn't want them to return. I wouldn't care if they survived my games. They all would have stayed there forever. Now, this next theory is really interesting. I don't think I've seen one like this or even heard anyone questioning this. And that is that Usagi's dad is actually still alive in Alive in Borderland. In the scene where Usagi is in the mountains with her dad, he mentions how he wants more mountains in this world. In season 2, someone mentions how the mountains keep on growing and surrounding the city and closing it up almost. When I started watching season 2, I just had a feeling that maybe Yusuke's dad didn't die. He just went to the borderland and I had a theory that he would be the king of spades, but I guess not. I still think that there might be a possibility that the borderland wasn't just a near-death experience, and it actually exists. Okay, so that is that theory, and that Yusagi's dad didn't actually die. So I think this theory is really a bit of a stretch. Honestly, I think Yusagi's dad's death was meant to happen in the series for Yusagi's growth and development throughout the series. Let me explain. Every character in the show had a reason at some point or another to maybe give up and not continue fighting. I mean, that was the whole premise of the show. It's survival of the fittest, and not only is it a huge physical game, it's a huge mental game. No one character knew for sure at the end of this that they would return to their natural world, and so I feel like for a lot of the show, a lot of the characters like Yusagi and Arisa, and that one man, that one man, I can't remember his name, he should have died in the fire right when they were at the beach. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? You know the man? Him. I'll put him on screen somewhere. He got bullied in his past life or whatever, and so he became a bully in Borderland. Anywho, they all had something to gripe with in their past in the natural world, right? For Yusagi, her dad's death in the natural world made her not want to continue fighting, and so that was one of the things she had to work through in the show, to have that will to want to live again and return to the natural world. So I feel like if this was all just a big thing and that, oh, Yusagi's dad actually isn't dead, I just think it wouldn't make sense for the storyline and for Yusagi's personal growth and development as a character. This next theory is centered around those who died by lasers. Now, of course, not everyone in the games died to a laser. I think the people who died in the games were pretty much dead on arrival in reality, meaning they didn't have a strong heartbeat and weren't able to fight for long. This would also explain why the deaths in the game were more brutal, because their bodies are more damaged, whereas the people whose visas ran out or lost a game that they didn't die in were fighting for their lives in reality and their heartbeats were strong. And thus, when they died, their bodies finally gave out, and this was shown by a red laser going through them. A red laser that if you turned sideways, would look just like a flat line on a heart monitor, implying that the death lasers actually kind of resemble a person's heartbeat flatlining. I think this is a really cool theory. I think the whole connection between the lasers and a person's heartbeat flatlining takes a special person to see that. Like, I never thought of that. But seeing the premise of the show in that it's called Alice in Borderland, which if you think about it, Borderland resembles purgatory in which you're kind of waiting between the state of life and death. You're not alive, you're not exactly dead, but you're just kind of in this weird middle ground. And so if they were dead upon arrival, they wouldn't have made it to Borderland. That's the only qualm I have with that theory, but I think it is a really cool theory to consider. So this next theory is the answer to the question a lot of characters had throughout the show and how others arrived before or after one another and how they didn't all arrive exactly at the same time. To Borderland. So as per the last episode of season 2, we know that they entered Borderland when their hearts stopped. We also know from season 1, everyone entered Borderland on different days, thinking that the time their hearts stopped is correlated to when they arrived in Borderland. For example, in season 1, Chibuki arrived in Borderland two days before Arisa, Chota, and Karube. So that would mean her heart stopped before theirs did. This theory, I think, I think it's the truth. I think this is exactly right. The time in which your heart stopped would make sense in which you arrived to Borderland. From the last episode, we saw how all of them were kind of in different places. Uh, 
Harube, Jodai, and Arisa were all in the bathroom. Others were literally on the street driving a van with them being in different spaces and places and being surrounded by different things that could have possibly harmed them. Their injuries can't all be the same, nor could all of their hearts stop beating at the exact same time. So I think, yeah, with the moment their hearts stopped beating in the real world, they were transported to Borderland Purgatory, and that explains why people like Shibuki arrived two days before Arisa and his gang. And the last theory we're going to talk about focuses on the Joker card we all saw at the end that had us questioning, hey, did they actually make it out? Is it going to be a season three? Who's the Joker? Are there more games? Etc. Etc. So this theory basically states that the players did not return to the real world like they think they have. The players have not made it out like they think they have, but have instead entered into phase three of the games, made more dangerous by the fact that they are unaware and have no memory. The Joker is meant to represent the wild card and so suggests even more unpredictability. In many card games, the Joker can take on the characteristics of other cards, meaning it could present as any one of the dangerous challenges they faced before or be an entirely fresh new hell for them to contend with. So this one, I don't want to believe for the sake of the characters um because i don't want them to go back to that hellhole but for the sake of the show if it's going to be a season three it has to focus it has to focus on the idea of the joker maybe someone is the joker or they actually didn't return to the real world like they thought they have it's got to be something like that i'm interested to see if netflix maybe picks it up for a season three if they continue the storyline even though it is actually finished I want to know. Let me know your thoughts below if you'd like to see a season 3 or if you want them to leave the storyline alone. But now that completes today's video. Those were the theories. I hope you enjoyed reading through them as much as I did. Do you think there should be a season 3? Do you think they should leave it alone? What are your thoughts about the season, about the character? Did you agree with any of these theories? Do you have an argument for a theory of your own? Just let me know. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap up today's video. Like I said, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe. But anyways, that's all for me. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.